Have you ever wondered how political figures amass wealth? Across the globe the corridors of power are not just pathways to political influence, but often to considerable personal wealth. How do elected officials surrounded by policies and watchdogs manage to accumulate fortunes that seem bewilderingly disproportionate to their salaries? The answers to these questions aren't straightforward and often lead us down a labyrinth of legal loopholes, secretive deals, and sometimes outright corruption. As we peel back the layers of political wealth accumulation, we find stories that seem almost too dramatic to be true. One such story is that of Mariam Abacha, the wife of Nigeria's former military ruler, who was rumored to have stashed away bags filled with millions of dollars. How does a first lady come to possess such vast sums of money? What mechanisms were in place to allow this accumulation? And what does this tell us about the intertwining of personal wealth and political power? Today, we delve into the riveting tale of Mariam Abacha and the infamous bags of money. Meet Mariam Abacha, a name that resonates deeply in Nigeria's political history. Born on March 4, 1947, in the bustling city of Kaduna, Mariam Abacha stepped into the limelight through her marriage to General Sani Abacha in 1965. General Abacha, a figure both revered and reviled, ruled Nigeria with an iron fist from 1993 until his untimely death in 1998. During these years, Mariam was not just a spectator, but an active participant in the corridors of power. As the First Lady of Nigeria, Mariam Abacha carved a niche for herself within the political landscape. Her role transcended the traditional ceremonial duties often associated with spouses of heads of state. Mariam was known for her involvement in numerous social and political initiatives. She championed women's rights and was instrumental in the establishment of several women's organizations across Nigeria. These groups aim not only to empower women, but also to foster a sense of community and support among them. Her influence, however, was a double-edged sword. While she garnered admiration for her charitable works and advocacy, her tenure was also shadowed by controversy. The opacity of her husband's regime, marked by accusations of human rights abuses and corruption, inevitably cast a pall over her own public image. Critics often questioned the source of the Abacha family's wealth and Mariam's exact role in the state's affairs. Despite these controversies, Mariam maintained a dignified presence in public life even after her husband's death. She continued her social work and remained a prominent figure in Nigerian society, often remembered for her resilience and her unwavering commitment to her causes. Mariam's story takes a dramatic turn as we uncover the financial mysteries that followed her husband's death. Following Sani Abacha's sudden demise in 1998, a startling discovery came to light. As the world came to terms with the end of his dictatorial regime, attention quickly turned to his family, particularly his wife, Mariam Abacha. What unfolded was a complex web of financial intrigue that spanned continents and shook the foundations of international finance. Mariam Abacha found herself at the center of a scandal involving vast sums of money. Investigations revealed that these funds were not just stored in local bank vaults, but were also stashed across numerous foreign accounts. From bustling financial hubs in Switzerland to quiet islands in the Caribbean, the money had traveled far and wide. This wasn't just pocket change, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, a staggering amount by any standard. The discovery prompted a swift response from the international community. Several governments initiated legal battles to freeze these accounts. The aim was clear, to repatriate the funds back to Nigeria where they could potentially help in nation building and economic development. This wasn't just about correcting a financial wrong. It was a moral stand against corruption and the pilfering of a nation's wealth. Within Nigeria, the reaction was mixed. On one hand, there was outrage. Citizens already grappling with economic challenges were infuriated to learn about the scale of wealth siphoned off by their former leader's family. On the other hand, there was a sense of vindication for those who had long suspected the regime of corruption, but had little proof until then. The economic implications of these discoveries were significant. Nigeria, rich in resources but struggling with poverty, saw this as an opportunity to reclaim what was rightfully theirs. 
economists estimated that the return of these funds could boost the economy, potentially improving public services and infrastructure. However, the process was fraught with legal and diplomatic challenges, highlighting the complex nature of global finance and the difficulty in tracking and recovering stolen assets. Moreover, the political landscape in Nigeria felt the shockwaves. Trust in leadership plummeted, and there was a renewed call for transparency and accountability in government. The scandal not only redefined Nigeria's approach to governance, but also set a precedent for how similar cases might be handled globally. The implications of these findings were far-reaching, affecting not just the Abacha family but the entire nation. The fallout from the discovery of the Abacha loot was monumental. In the wake of this revelation, the world turned its gaze towards Nigeria, not just to witness the scale of the plunder, but to understand the mechanisms of global financial systems that allowed such vast sums to be moved and hidden across borders. The efforts to recover the stolen funds have been Herculean. Teams of lawyers, forensic accountants, and financial analysts have been navigating a maze of offshore accounts, shell companies, and complex legal systems. These efforts are spearheaded not only by the Nigerian government, but also by international organizations committed to combating global corruption. The World Bank and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime have played pivotal roles, providing technical assistance and helping to ensure that the recovered funds are used judiciously. The legal battles are just as intricate. Each jurisdiction where the funds were hidden has its own laws regarding asset recovery, making the process slow and often frustrating. Countries like Switzerland, the United Kingdom and the United States have been involved, each with their own set of bureaucratic challenges and legal requirements. It's a dance of diplomacy and law enforcement that stretches across continents. Amidst this international drama, Maria Mabacha has been a figure of enduring interest and controversy. She has defended her family's legacy vigorously, navigating the treacherous waters of public opinion both in Nigeria and globally. Her interviews and public statements often paint a picture of a family wronged by political adversaries and biased media. She asserts that her husband was a patriot, misunderstood and maligned after his death. Her ability to maintain her dignity and her family's prominence in Nigerian society speaks volumes about her resilience and savvy. Mariam's efforts to manage her public image have been met with mixed reactions. On one hand, she is seen as a matriarch who stood strong in the face of global scrutiny. On the other, critics argue that her public statements are attempts to whitewash the documented misdeeds of her husband's regime. This dichotomy is reflective of the larger narrative of power and corruption that is all too familiar in global politics. The global implications of this saga are profound. The Abacha loot has become a case study in international finance, highlighting the urgent need for transparency and stronger regulations to prevent money laundering and corruption. It underscores the interconnectedness of global financial systems and the ease with which funds can be hidden across borders unless stringent measures are taken. In the broader context, the story of the Abacha loot has spurred on greater international cooperation in the fight against corruption. It has catalyzed discussions at global forums about the ethics of banking secrecy and the moral responsibilities of countries that often unknowingly harbor stolen wealth. Mariam Abacha's story is a complex web of politics, power, and public perception. It serves as a stark reminder of the challenges faced in recovering from the deep-seated corruption that can afflict nations and the enduring human stories at the heart of these political dramas. As we reflect on Mariam Abacha's story, several questions linger. We have traversed through the enigmatic corridors of wealth in politics, unveiling who Mariam Abacha was and the origins of her immense wealth. We have followed the intricate money trail, exploring how vast sums found their way into global financial systems and we've considered the aftermath and broader global implications of such wealth accumulation. Mariam Abacha's narrative is a stark reminder of the persistent issues of corruption and accountability that plague many nations rich in natural resources. It challenges us to think deeply about the effectiveness of governance and the mechanisms in place to prevent the misuse of power. As we conclude, let's ponder on the lessons learned from this tale 
How can countries better safeguard their wealth? What steps can be taken to ensure that leaders serve the public good rather than their personal interests? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching.